This is John Black, Super Journalist. Uh, this is just a disclaimer just to let you know that uh, this video is not intended to be imitated, uh, no parts of it. Uh, it should not be copied or done by you or anybody. It's just for educational and maybe entertainment purposes to watch. That's it. I don't condone anyone repeating anything in the video. Now this is what I bought. It's just drain opener. I got it at Lowe's. All places sell it to all hardware places, you know, Walmart, whatever. I'm going to show you two ways to extract this or to make it more pure or better. One is the easy method, but it's not as pure. And the second way is the ultra pure way. You see, I'm going to show you what I normally do. You can see I'm set up for a distillation here. This is nothing. This is something else. Basically, I just do that because I'm going to just heat this up until it gets clear. When it's clear, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? I don't try to just do anything. I've tried this without a vacuum. I don't know how they do it. My parts always, uh, ground glass joints always come apart. So anyways, this takes forever to heat up. So when it starts heating up, I'll show you how it changes color. You can see it's only up to like 170 C. It's turning like an orange lighter color. It'll be 195. Well, you can see it went from pink to orange. Now it's yellow. It's almost starting to boil. This is under atmospheric pressure, no vacuum. Well, it's been boiling about a minute or so. It's about 300 Celsius. It's still yellow, though. It's distilling over a little bit of water. I usually do it until my glass starts coming apart at the joints. It's only cooled down a little bit, and it's already cleared up a lot. By the time it hits room temperature, it should be almost crystal clear like water. Well, that's right. Clear. Look how clear that is. That is clear. 500 milliliters. I didn't have to distill any of it. I just boiled it. So much static shock around here. I picked this up and I got a static shock. I dropped it. No, it's broke. Anyways, that's how much I got out of there. Although some of it might have spilled out of water. Alright, well there's my apparatus. It looks more complicated than it is. It's just a simple distillation. I was going to use my vacuum pump. But I hate that thing. And I just realized something with this, this hand pump. I can actually use it when I was, you know, not putting any heat, applying heat to the system. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't boiling. Um, once it starts boiling, it will take, you know, you'll have to pump it every once in a while. Because as it, as it adds gas into the system, you know, that takes away from your vacuum, right? So everyone, I mean, it's no big deal. It's not like you're pumping it every second. Anyways, here's my stuff. I'm going to just do it. Here's my condenser. Now it comes down into this weird thing here. This right here is called a pig. And you can connect three different flasks to it. See there, I got this flask, this flask, and this flask. I'll connect it up to this pig. So when the first thing comes in, I don't have to show. I can It'll go into the, it, it'll travel down to this first one, right? But when I want to move on to the next phase, you know, where it's all, I think that it's all pure concentrated sulfuric acid, I can move this. See? 
I, mean, I need two hands to do it, but I, I can move this so that it comes down into that. Then I can move the next one. Okay, I'll get that out of the way there. So now it goes into the middle one. If I go like this, now it'll go into that last one. So I don't have to turn my vacuum off, you know what I mean? And switch flask and blah, blah, blah. Let my temp go down. Now on the pig, there's your, you know, your output to the atmosphere. I have a hose coming down to these two valves. Goes into the giant round bottom flask and back out to my pump, my hand pump. Now the reason I did that, I didn't just connect my pump up directly, is because I want the valves. If I need to take this off, you know what I mean, I just have to pull the, the hose off and the whole vacuum just, you know, drops like that. If I got a valve, I can do it little at a time, you know what I'm saying? You notice I used this big giant 2000 milliliter flask in between my pump and my glass apparatus, right? And I had the two valves on it. These two valves, one led to the apparatus and one led to the vacuum pump. And I did that because of the valves. I went... The reason why I use such a big flask on the bottom, because when you, I mean, it's not necessary, like, you know, you have to do it, but it's a good idea. When you use a vacuum, like a vacuum pump, pump like a strong vacuum, uh, you should always add some volume to your glass apparatus. And the reason why is because there are fluctuations on those pumps. You know, it's not like it keeps an exact pressure all the time. And the fluctuation, the bigger the, the, the room is, where your apparatus, the less abrupt it is. The less, you know what I mean? Especially when you have it way over by the pump, you know what I mean? It's going to hit this first that pressure change you know what I mean and then evenly distribute it out more as it moves through the system you know what I mean so if you have a big round bottom flask that helps to like uh, buffer it helps to like buffer that I'll turn the heat on we'll get this started well this is going to take forever to get the heat up it's got to be up to you know 300 celsius almost I don't have that big of a vacuum on it um, but at least I don't have to hear that pump go on the entire time that's so nerve wracking. I uh, put 200 milliliters in there, even if it's 90 percent. I mean, just to do easy math, let's say we're getting 100 percent out. What is that? 10 milliliters for every 100 milliliters, so that's 20 milliliters of water I need to get out of there, say. So once I get 20 milliliters out, I'll just assume that it's good and switch to the second uh, flask. And then if I'm wrong, I have a third flask here, so I could, you know, move it over to that. That's about 160 Celsius. Took the vacuum down a little better. It's starting to turn orange now. Maybe I can get it to boil at 200. Well, it's about 200, 210 probably uh, Celsius. It's turned yellow. Uh, that's about 250, 255 C, and it's finally starting to boil very slowly. We got some water in the condenser up here in the still head. I can't really see. Well, as you can see, I had to cover up the the pot there because it, it would never distill. You know what I mean? So I, that keeps the heat in, gets it up where it's finally starting to distill. There's the condenser right here. It's coming down. Here's the pig. You can see the line right here. It's going straight to this flask right here. You can see it on camera. We got some filled in there already. I didn't see it. 
Alright, I got about 15, 20 milliliters in there. I'm going to switch it over. See that on a little one? Alright, between the first one and the middle one, it's definitely all the water is out. So I'm going to move this around. To the last one. Now it has no choice but to come down here. Let me pump it. You can see these are clear. I'm distilling. I only got this much for the concentrated stuff. Like the last batch, there was three batches. I only got this is 150 milliliter flask, and I only got maybe 35 milliliters in there, and that's from both batches, the middle batch and the last batch. I actually combined this with the second. Remember how there was the first two batches were like 15 to 20 milliliters each, and then the last batch was going to be like the whole thing, or most, you know, the major product. And uh, I had to turn off the heat, and I was like, screw it. I ain't. crystal clear. And uh, um, I had to stop because. Uh, my car was broke down, and my buddy that was going to look at it came over, and I had to I had to stop. And I'm not about to heat all this stuff back up. Uh, I wish I had 100 milliliters. That's what I wanted to get out of there, of the good stuff, and then say 50 that was just dilute, and then 50 left in the pot. But it didn't work out that way. This this should be good though. I just want it for a dehydration reaction. So, anyways, you get the gist. Uh, the way you know that your stuff is concentrated all the way it can be is it's like looking at uh, vodka. If you take vodka and put it up to the light, you'll see like, uh, you'll see there's two liquids. It's not pure. Nerd Rage, I think, was the one who said put something in it in front of it and see if it's clear or not. I don't know if you can see that on tape. Because of the angle of the round bar and flask, it doesn't look good unless you're straight up and down on it. So, but you can see there's no distortion on the letters or whatever. Probably can't see it, but there's salt. That's the pot. That's all the sulfuric acid. There's boiling stones in there that are white, but there's also white salt. I know drain cleaners have, uh, you know, like sulfuric acid, they have uh, corrosion inhibitors in them. So maybe it's a salt, some type of salt or whatever. Oh, and you can see, this is, this is the sulfuric acid that was left in the pot. I filtered it. It wasn't, it was just like a fine dusting there of the, the uh, salt. So I didn't, I'm not even going to collect it. But this, it's very, very yellow. I mean, the other, you know, the stuff I just boil, you know, it's not this bad looking. And uh, so this must have degraded some. Something must have happened, you know what I mean? I always remember, science is great.